Scala in the terms of functional programming language, I think yes. Uh, now that the time which I have invested earlier uh, in those discussions is coming as you know is proving useful here. So Scala supports yes functional programming language. Yes, it's a so pure functional languages don't really allow any mutable state. Okay, so typically your you know your mutable state. If there is a mutable state, it's a problem. The moment you talk about your, you know, those applications where where there are those synchronization problems and all, right? So typically, uh, you know, Scala supports this model by Actors Library. Actors Library is one way, but otherwise, as a what I, what should I say? In, as a kind of a philosophy. Uh, typically, Scala encourages you or it provides you the constructs in such a way that you typically should create vals, not vars. Now, vals and vars are some of the new things which are coming to you without even you know informing what they are. It's all about typically they say uh, you know work in the terms of constants. Don't typically work on the in the terms of variables. Okay, so we we will talk about that. Okay, so. Typically, this is the way Scala works. In fact, it's uh, until unless you really require it, you should not even create the vars in Scala. Okay, so you will see that it is typically uh, very, very, uh, uh, I would say, uh, native to a functional programming style rather than uh, the object-oriented programming style. By the way, I do understand that many of you might have worked on the Java, not might have have already worked in Java environment. So you must be very, very good from the object-oriented side. Very good. Keep it with you. But uh, before we start on, let's say, module number four, right? It would be really good if you can just take a very quick refresher of uh, functional programming. Okay? You can just take a very quick kind of an idea about it, right? It really helps. Nothing else. Okay, functions are the first class regions. I think I have just told about it. So they are actually treated just like variables. The way you treat variables, you know, you can pass them to the functions. Um, you can pass a function to the other function. You can write another function within a function. Okay, a lot of other things, right? So we will come to that part in details whenever you know we'll be visiting about the function programming aspects of it. And also, Scala offers closures. Now, this is something you must have heard about lambdas, right? Uh, especially those people who are aware of Java 8, they have actually copied it. Okay, they have copied it from Scala, Ruby, Python, all that. Okay, lambdas and all. So they are kind of, you know, your. So if if I have to say, if, I'll just summarize it in a way that, uh, you know, functions and all, right? PL SQL and all or any other programming language non object oriented because functions are not a word in object oriented world right in object oriented world what is the equivalent of function or I mean there is no word called function right it is called method and methods are typically associated with a class and then you instantiate an object and then you keep on calling you pass the parameters to these methods which are invoked on those object instances right Guys, making some sense, right? So there is nothing called there is nothing called a function. But here in this functional programming world, PL sequels and all, you must have heard about functions, procedures, packages, right? They ca carry a very different meaning than the methods of object-oriented programming, and the other so the thing which keeps Scala completely different from the other functional programming languages is that typically functions are named function calculate radius function something right so there are functions with some names and then their body you can create anonymous functions in Scala no name just body <laughs> another different thing right but if you, you are coming from Ruby background or Python background, it must not be new for you. So it is an anonymous function. It doesn't know. You just pass it to some, pass something to it, it will just work. It has no name, right? Uh, in a different convoluted way, we typically call them as closers also. 
you will see that in what a lot of details. See this. So Scala is something which you are not really learning for Spark, by the way. Just to tell you. Akka I have told. Scalding, MapReduce. It's a framework which allows you to write your MapReduce jobs very, very fast. If you people are, if, if some of you have worked on Python, you must be aware. There's a new framework which Python has introduced, right? Called PyDoop. P Y D W O P, Pydoop, right? Something like that. It's cousin in Scala, Scala world, I would say, right? Just, just you can write your codes much faster. Play, web development guys, right? Ruby on Rails is a framework, right? Which is written in Ruby. Similarly, Play. So it, it supports Java as well as Scala. You can create, you can do your web development in play, which is again one of the very popular kind of, uh, or I would say newly popular kind of frameworks, right? So guys, the whole idea behind it is I'm not reading the text here. I'm just trying to give you the gist of it that yes, it is really useful. 